Cornetti. Brian. It is a pleasure to be in your presence today, my dear. It's a bigger pleasure for me to be in your presence oh, today. Oh, how you do go on. <laughs> and please do go on. <laughs> you know, we, we have a lot to talk about, but I have to say this off the bat. Your hair is always stunning. Always. Well, as I said a long time ago, uh, I was in a production in Bochum, Germany. They wanted to change my hair to some purple color. I don't know what it was. And I said, there is no way I'm going to change my hair to some purple color for some production. Because I said, mein Haar ist mein Herz. My hair is my heart. And it's absolutely a, a point that I take very seriously, even to the point I probably shouldn't say this because it's a little bit pretentious, but because I sing a lot in Europe, I have found a very good colorist and a very good um, uh, hairdresser that I get my hair done in London. In fact, I just had it done in London, from Sao Paulo to London. Wow, so yeah. that, that's what goes into that. Hey, listen. It's my, it's my, it's my heart. <laughs> right. Now here I'm thinking I could go into, because it's become, I think, really uh, iconic, uh, an iconic look for you. I'm thinking I could go into a salon in Pittsburgh and say, give me the Marianne Cornetti. You know, um, Maria Callas always said, you have to have a look. You have to have something that grabs people. Mm. And uh, so my hair has become you know, at least when I walk on stage, if it's in a concert or something, people remember that. Now with Callis, I think it was the eyebrows. Oh yeah, they were pretty dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you gotta get a gimmick, I <laughs> guess it was. Now you certainly, I mean, your, your talents speak for themselves. You know, I, well, I, thank you. I have been a big fan for a very long time. And uh, the title that uh, has been attributed to you is one of the leading Verde mezzo-sopranos in the world. Now, how does one come by a title like that? From a God-given talent. Yes. And is that where it came from? Really, honestly. I, I truly believe that. I do have to say that I started out singing all the small roles, you know, the compromario roles. Um, and of course, my training here with Pittsburgh Opera was something that will forever remain in my heart. I'm, I'm so grateful for, for that uh, training. But when I went to the Met, um, I was there for five years and, and doing the small roles there. And in that time period, uh, I was asked to sing um, Finena in Nabucco with Atlanta Opera. And I was excited because it was going to be my first, you know, big role. About two or three months after that audition, my manager calls and said, well, I have good news and I have bad news. Let me give you the bad news first. The Nabucco is going to be po postponed in Atlanta um, for the following year. I said, oh darn. He said, but wait, the good news is they want you to sing Azucena from Il Trovatore. I, my knees started to shake. I'd never done any major, major role like that. And I said, my goodness, you're, you're, you're not joking. And he said, no, I'm very serious. And I said, give me a weekend, I'll fly to New York. I took it to my teacher. And she said, Marianne, this is like a glove wow. for your voice. And from there, it slowly started. I did my first Trovatore. Then I was asked to do Amneris from Aida. And it started to, to build into this dramatic uh, mezzo-soprano, a, a true Verdiana. Now, even a small role at the Met, I have to imagine, is quite an accomplishment. But when you've made it to the Met, you, you've kind of made it, yeah? When I got that call, oh gosh, it's, it's something that you can't even begin to, to explain. Mm. I'm going to the Metropolitan. That, for a singer, is one of, as an American singer, uh, or even, it's, it's, it, the Metropolitan is truly the greatest theater in the world. Um, but for me, it was like a dream come true. Now, you mentioned your training with Pittsburgh Opera, so you, your career did start here in Pittsburgh, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I um, had graduated from Duquesne University, and uh, the following fall, I was asked to be, um, at the time, it wasn't the young artist, it was called an apprentice. And that's when Pittsburgh Opera had their um, 
summer program. It was a six-week summer program. You yourself, I mean, in addition to you know performing in operas, you really do a lot of solo concerts. Right. And not just any opera singer can carry that off. Oh. Now, Plenty can sing, but I think it takes a little something more. Now, just in my observation of Marianne Cornetti, it, I, you have a undeniable presence. That's what I. That's what I get when I, I, I see you on stage. Oh, well, thank you. That's what, a huge compliment. Well, you're welcome. Now, but what do you think it is? Well, first of all, um, my first love was not opera. It was Broadway. I grew oh. up with Broadway shows. I grew up in the church singing. Um, and when I finally uh, realized that there was a voice and then started to be classically trained, that's when I started to be interested in opera. But my mom... Um, came from nine, a big Irish family, nine kids. And my grandmother, my great grandmother was a singer, a mezzo soprano. Oh, wow. My grandmother could rock a piano like you have <laughs> no idea. And my mom played the piano, played the guitar, she sang along with a lot of her siblings. She and her sister sang on the radio um, together. Oh, my wow. mom would play the guitar and they would both sing. So there's music in the family. But we grew up on all of those show tunes, and that's where the love of the show tunes and the gospel things and all of these things started. Um, and I truly believe that in these kinds of s settings, and that that you, I come with what I am. I am an opera singer, and so I like to do usually the first half as an opera singer, as arias and this kind of thing. But then I like to do the, 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 the uh, show tunes and the other things that are a little bit lighter because I think you have to, you have to um, give a little bit of everything to your audience, you know? And believe me, it's not easy mm. because once you've come from that very difficult arias and whatnot, then you have to sort of <laughs> shift a little bit right. <laughs> to do, there's no business like show <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> but now, coming up November 1st, here at the Andrew Carnegie Free Library and Music Hall in Carnegie, right. which we're, we're having our interview today, right. here in the beautifully restored and renovated library. I mean, could we ask for a better, nice, cozy fall setting, this beautiful Look fireplace? Uh, and I think we'll overlay a picture of the renovation that they did. It's just so cozy to be in here and wonderful. It is. And then just behind us is the Grand Music Hall, where you've performed uh, before. Right. And in yeah. fact, November 1st, I, I believe we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of your first appearance mm -hmm. here. Is that correct? Well, actually, very good martini, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, actually, I had sung here 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Then I had done another concert. But they were both fundraisers. This is the first time. And now that the, the project is almost very close to being finished, it is not a fundraiser as such, but it is a sold concert. Mm. And so that has, that's a different thing. That's, I think that's the first time that Maggie has produced something like this. Um, and so it's, a, it's me coming back after 10 years of doing that fundraiser where they were, we were trying to get the uh, monies funded for you know, doing the renovations and whatnot. But it's almost finished after 10 years. And believe me, Brian, it's it's a pleasure and um, a real joy to be in my own city, first of all, singing, um, but also to come to these little jewels that are around Pittsburgh. We have so many of mm -hmm. them, and this is one of them. This is a lovely theater with uh, beautiful acoustics, and it always has such a warmth mm -hmm. in this theater. So I'm thrilled to come back and, and do it and uh, because I think it, it's a real feather in Maggie Forbes' cap. Oh, she's you know? very proud of it. And to oh, quote yes. Maggie, as a matter of fact, you know, on your point of how the space has transformed in a decade, uh, uh, Maggie has said it has been a transformation from rundown to remarkable, moribund to magical. And I think we need to specify she is talking about the theater. Yes, right? that's exactly <laughs> right. I know you're a Steelers fan. You have no idea the stories that I have about my passion for sports, to the point that it's ridiculous. I remember somewhere in the 2000s when the Steelers were in either the, the playoffs or 
um, I don't know if it was uh, the the um, uh, not the World Series, but the the um, Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. Excuse me, man. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that. I can't anyway, believe I got that. Yeah, yes. I'm glad. <laughs> I actually called Dolores Smith because I couldn't find. I was in Italy. I could not find a bar, a television, anything <laughs> that had a uh, the Steeler the Super Bowl on. So I called a very good friend of mine, Dolores Smith, and I said, Dee, are you going to watch the Steeler game? She said, well, yeah. And I said, would you mind if you would just put the phone near the television for the next three and a half hours oh and I could listen to it? And she said, are you sure? And I said, oh, I, have to, I have to listen to it. And that's how I did it. That is dedication. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, not a lot of people know this, but you and the cast of Aida at intermission play tag football <laughs> backstage. <laughs> A medley would be interesting oh, of those two. Oh my goodness, absolutely. <laughs> I would love, that's actually a very good idea. That would be a, a wonderful go. take on doing medleys of uh, 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 Italian operas and mix it with Broadway. I believe the kids are calling this sort of thing a mashup. That, <laughs> you know? That's funny. The Marianne Cornetti's mashup. There's your next <laughs> concert tour. <laughs> That's a very good idea. You're welcome. I'll only take 5%. That's it's just, right. Otherwise, it's all yours. You're, you're good to go. Listen, if we get to Broadway, I'll give you more. There we go. <laughs> I like where this is going. Uh, I've seen a, a, a Rigoletto in a spaceship. This is ridiculous. <laughs> now, if you were asked to do that shit, would you, would you do it? Do you know what? <laughs> Now, now, Wagner, I think of the breastplate and the horns, oh, am I right? yes, that's exactly no, right. No, this is bring, a little different. All right. So you're not bringing those this time <laughs> no, around? No, no, that's no. That's the after party, that's right? That's the...